Meanwhile, my next guest also is known for his dividend ideas. In fact, he's the host of the Dividend Cafe podcast, as well as uh, the managing director of the Bonson Group, David Bonson. All right, David, so this market has to fight, let's say, all the traditional things that, you know, people coming in. There were so many obvious reasons for, um, for, for, for the be bearish. What do you think has happened? What has been the... Uh, you know, we have Mike Wilson saying he underestimated how much valuations could throw. He under he misread the AI thing. Is it just those kind of intangibles? I just want to point out that even though mathematically the whole entire return has come from valuation boost, not earnings growth, it isn't true that that's what some of the bears like Mike Wilson earlier were talking about. They were predicting recession. Right. It was a fundamental call. And fundamentally, we just didn't get the recession. Maybe we get it later. Right. Maybe My view is was always that if it did come, it was going to be pretty muted, a kind of mellow recession. But either way, there was fundamentals going on that didn't surface. And then I think from a valuation standpoint... Sentiment got a lot hotter, and now in July, what's changed right. is it broadened out. Right, and it's broadening out pretty good. I think yesterday, 89% of the S&P 500 yeah. above their 50-day moving average. Yeah. You've talked about a stagnant economy mm-hmm. based in large part on our national debt. So, you know, we've gone from zero trillion <laughs> to 32 trillion. Uh, and it's amazing because there was a time, I would say, right around here, I remember 2008, 2009, grandma's gone off the cliff, all that kind of stuff. Grandma didn't go off the cliff. All of a sudden, everyone just yawns. No matter how deep this gets, everyone yawns. Are we going to yawn until we finally go off the cliff? Where I would encourage people to be much more upset is when you have peacetime and no recession, economic expansion, and you're still running trillion dollar deficits. That's really where it came from. In the course of the financial crisis, I don't agree with everything the Obama administration did, but it got real worse in the second term because they kept spending. And then throughout the Trump administration, pre-COVID, we were still running trillion dollar deficits. Right, right. That's the issue where once you have a recession, you come backwards, you 32 trillion a debt. No one knows where that big bang moment is where the market rebels, but we're in a position that is going to stagnate growth for years to come. Okay, so that's that's happening anyway. And then, of course, the big bang is going to eventually happen because we're not going to ever stop. Obviously, uh, the post COVID spending didn't help either. Uh, But remember, never let a good uh, good uh, (laughs) a good crisis go to waste. You've got some new positions, and what's interesting is all of these companies have already reported. Kind of share the thinking behind IBM, BlackRock, and J&J. So I, it, everyone does the same thing, because I have Blackstone, BX, oh. instead of BLK, and okay. so you, you'll mark that up there. BX. That's a mistake that all of us on Wall Street make all the time. <laughs> uh, IBM. I've owned a long time. Blackstone, we've owned 10 years. Johnson Johnson, we've owned a long time. We're adding to positions. Loved what we saw in earnings season last week. J&J was up 7% last Thursday. Their year-over-year growth revenue in their medical device business was over 12%. They just have incredible products, incredible pricing power. Blackstone, one of the great dividend growers in the marketplace, an asset manager, fee-based business, doing incredible things, and even in this high-rate environment, really perform well. I IBM, I know you've been bearish on it at points in the past for good right, reason. Right, right. Such a laggard over a long period of time. We got into the stock a couple of years ago because we just love their cash flow generation now combined with the ability to have AI, uh, various uh, new I'm technologies. Looking, man. I keep looking like, you know, now are you ready? Are you ready? I mean, I, listen, I, they bought Red Hat. I think they overpaid, but at least they started making moves because they spent 10 years just buying back their own stock and not growing the business. And I would argue them buying back their own stock over that period of time was a better thing to be doing than continuing to go into a dead business, right? right? I mean, sometimes people... Well, that getting... was the biggest issue. They didn't want to let go of the core business that wasn't working. And so the, that hardware business has no multiple multiple attached to right. it, but there's free cash flow generated that has allowed them to pivot into cloud, right. into hybrid, the Red Hat deal. They did overpay, but it's really going to work right. out over time. And their consulting business is a cash generator. Great stuff, David. Thank you yeah. so much, folks. Just a reminder.